The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 27th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Traders and Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is not too soon, 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Of course, internationally seven two seven four four five ten forty four. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow trading up twenty five points. He's trading out at nineteen nine fifty nine. I like that. The S and P's up six points at twenty two seventy. And the X one hundred up thirty one point six tenths of a percent, trading out at forty nine seventy one. Nasdaq composite up a half a percent, twenty nine points. Russell two thousand up four tenths of a point. Our percent uh, up 5.6 points. Semiconductors leading the charge on the way up nearly 1% to the upside out here, up eight bucks, uh, trading out at 936. Uh, gold is up five. Silver's up 19. Pennies Light Speed Crude up 88 cents. She's trading at 53.90. Leading the charge here to the upside individual stock wise. You've got Priceline up 13 bucks. Amazon up 11. AutoZone in the zone up nearly seven bucks. Tesla up six and change. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up six. NVIDIA Corp, uh, the high flyer out there, up five bucks. Biogen up uh, four. Martin Marietta up 370. To the downside, you've got basic energy services. Nothing basic, about an 85% decline. Um, yeah, that's what it's uh, down, but not a really uh, a fairly thinly traded stock out there. So we'll kind of pass on taking a look at that. Seattle Genetics, Seattle Genetics. Let's try to say that one time smoothly. That's off nearly 16 percent or 10 bucks. Uh, a Vexus Inc. down four bucks, uh, seven percent to sorrow down three fifty two and a half percent. You've got the. Uh, the uh, bear bearish position on the miners, J Dust Dust. They're trading to the downside. So uh, plenty to look at out here. Hope you had a, a terrific holiday. Of course, uh, it is not over. Uh, still holiday festivities all over the place out there. So if you happen to be listening to us, thank you. If you're traveling, you know, travel safe. But uh, we've got another week of uh, at least another week of uh, light trading out here. Maybe the first place that we go take a look at is really what is it that you should anticipate for the next uh, four trading sessions? Now, short week here for us at TFNN. We're only with you on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we have a nice, another nice uh, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off just to be able to recharge our batteries out here. And if we take a look at the rest of the year, what to anticipate, the easiest thing is, and not that the past has to equal the future. Many times people believe that's the case, but certainly that is not what needs to happen out here. But let's just take a look back in time so that we make sure that we put this all in perspective out here. And as uh, we ended the uh, show last week, well, pretty close. It was on uh, Thursday was the uh, last show. But if we just take a look at uh, Christmas Eve on the 24th, we'll just try to begin there with regard to what the market did last year. And then we can go back for the next uh, 15 years. It won't take us that long to go back. But you can see these red lines that are on my chart out here. In the essence, the uh, close on the uh, 24th, I guess I should put this out here. It'll be a little bit easier. Inside the S&P 500, the close on the 24th was uh, 2060. And on the uh, 30. 
31st, you were 2044. Not a lot of movement out here last year. Last year doesn't make it, but let's go back another year. We're going to continue. We're going to do this, as I say, maybe 14, 15 times. You might get bored, but December 23rd, 2004. No, December 24th, I should say, 2014. Let's get this uh, little bar here where I can actually read it. Uh, you had the uh, close at uh, 2081. And by December 31st, the close was at uh, 2059 uh, out there. So, you know, about 12 point move to the downside. Nothing really huge out here. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the next year, which is going to be December 24, 2013. The close there was 1833. By the uh, 31st, we are at the uh, 1849 level out there. Again, not a huge movement. Uh, the point is here if you're a day trader, these are not days necessarily that you want to really be trading out here because as you're going to see, there's not a ton of movement. And boy, you really, you really need to catch this on the correct side. Go back to 2012 out here. Now, obviously, we know this is during the bull run. December 24th, the close was 1426. And by the 31st, you were at well, 1426. Certainly, there was movement during those few trading sessions out there. But, uh, you know, if we take a look at one close to the next out here, not a ton of movement. You really should be anticipating and expecting the same. Go back to 2011 out here. On December 23rd, must have been because when Christmas Eve fell, out here the close was 1265. And fast forward just to the uh, 31st out here. Well, it was really the 30th, 1257. No movement to speak of out there. That was in 2011. During the raging, I do say raging, bull market out here. Come back into 2010, December 23rd, 1256. And by the time you got to the 31st out here, you were at 1257. All right, we can round it to 1258. No real movement out there. That, again, is what we should really be anticipating. But let's not stop there. No reason to stop there. Go back to 2009, back in the December time frame. On the 24th, you were at 1126 inside the S&P. And when you got to the 31st, you were at 1115 out there. Again, not a significant amount of movement inside the market. You can see these red lines on my chart. You go back to 2008, same situation situation come back to 2007 obviously by that time in december the uh, bear market the dow moved down lower had started still not a ton of movement inside of the s p 500 even during that time frame coming to 2006 the raging bull market was not over. Not a lot of movement between December uh, 24th, if that was, it looks like maybe it was December 26th, actually, or the 22nd, and the end of the year. Uh, take a look at uh, back in 2005, really the same story for the uh, most part out here. So you get the picture, right? We can keep going back and back and back. We don't want to just keep doing that and boring you, but I do want to make sure that uh, we set the proper tone out here with regard to what, uh, that doesn't mean I don't want you to tune in. It just means don't expect these markets to get out of hand in either direction. The movement to the upside, well, it's very limited during this week out here. So don't let somebody tell you that this is just going to be the most positive bias week out there. Shenanigans is what I would say to anybody who says that because that just simply is not the case. You and I just proved it. And when we take a look at our TAS market profiles, we look at the daily high inside the ES Mini, inside the Dow, the YM, inside the Russell 2000, YMCA. There's not a ton of movement to the upside. It's all going to be about the NQ. So when we get back to Spike, let's go take a look at the NQ, see what she's communicating to you and I. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Uh, folks, uh, here I am with my uh, my favorite gift of the uh, year out here, my Red Wings tumbler. You know, I like to uh, sip water or, or you, know, you, you might think it's water. It is water during the uh, show out here. And, uh, of course, it's not going to – this tumbler is not going to stop the Red Wings from tumbling to the uh, downside. That's a bummer out there. But season ain't over. Now, if we take a look at, I mentioned the NQ out here, and uh, that really we wanted to take a look at, you know, what it was doing out here. And it did move higher. It is leading the charge. And in one sense, it could be, and I do say could be, forming an A to B equals CD to the upside, that little lightning bolt. And if we were to see the NQ close above 4961.75, not to be exact, but to be exact, 49.61.75, then we may be seeing a move to about the 50-40 level. That would complete the 1 to 1, A to B equals CD to the upside. That was after election eve when the uh, NQ moved down to a low of 45.57. That becomes your A point out there inside this lightning bolt. Your B point is the swing from November 29th. Then about a 60% retracement that took us into the low that formed on December 5th. That becomes your C point. So A to B equals C to D, meaning the same measured move from A to B. Just added to that uh, added to that uh, retracement level. We'll take you to the 50, 40 area. So closing above that TAS daily profile high would say, okay, game on there. However, uh, what also occurred, and it's going to be interesting to see how this played out, because you know how the market likes to sing in the key of G out here. And if you start from that swing point from the election eve, election morning cycle out here, and you start doing your wave counts to the upside, that little punch higher took us into that seventh wave move. Now, as we take a look at that on the charts out here, you're going to see that measured in that key of G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and G happens to be letter number seven out there. That's that seventh wave. Now, if the highs continue to get taken out each successive day on its way up to the 50-40, you could have that uh, completion 
of the A to B equals CD pattern, as well as the uh, singing in the key of G. Ideally, if, 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 uh, if I will just share this with you, ideally, if I were going to write the script here, it would be that the market would continue to dribble higher. I don't, is it even possible to dribble higher into, let's call it the 30th. Today's the 27th. So, you know, into the 30th, where just subtly, where nobody's really paying attention, that happens to end up being the final of that A to B equals CD pattern, as well as that seventh wave move. And then uh, the kibosh starts. Now, when I say kibosh, the markets are going to be much higher come uh, May, July, all right, that'd be May, June, July of uh, 2017 than where we're at today. But that doesn't mean these markets are just going to trade one way out here. So it is a uh, beautiful thing to celebrate. There may be people that were short the NQ, and, uh, and if you were, uh, hopefully it was from the top tick or something. But it, you had to be loving it. You had to be loving that it actually got up to a seventh wave. Now, price is above that oscillator unchanged line, that red line that we have out here, 49.39.64 to be exact as we speak right now. As long as price is above that, that's the bottom panel of my screen out here, says that you have a rising price oscillator and a rising oscillator above zero. Well, it is very bullish. However, these these wave counts out here or these lightning bolt patterns, they're leading indicators, leading price projection indicators. So this is the time to be careful because we have yet another topping pattern. And when I say topping, folks, when I say topping, OK, I'm talking about, you know, uh, and I hate whipped cream, but really just kind of like the whipped cream, not, not like topping like that's it. All time highs. We're now in a bear market. And blah, 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 what did you say? No, of course not. We are in a bull, bull, strong like bull market. Doesn't mean we're not going to have a trace, but the seasonality says we should expect, we should anticipate a market pullback. Then when there's these bloviators out there start telling you as the market starts pulling back in January that that's it, it's game over, it's sayonara, baby. Don't buy into any of that stuff that's going on. This is to be expected and anticipated out here. So inside the uh, NQ, we'll see how this plays out. We've got topping patterns all over the place out here. Inside the ES Mini price right now, really today, bumped its head up against two level of PS daily resistance areas. One was its TAS daily profile high. You don't see that on the chart. And the second happened to be that oscillator unchanged line. So its oscillator is actually price oscillator is actually turned down. It turned down a few days ago after it made that uh, TD sequential count. That was on the uh, trading day of uh, this system here always gets it off by day, but it looks like December 20th would have been the day. That blue number 13 out here, you know, is the uh, number. Um, you know, there's a question says, uh, where is a buy level you see if we pull back a bit from here? You know, inside, I'll say inside the ES mini, um, Mr. Z, if we take a look at that as a, uh, you know, as a level, I would say you pull back all the way to where that uh, TD setup nine count began, and that would be December 5th. That would be my first target. It's actually kind of like a junior-ish swing point. Now, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, as we've heard people call things the JV team. I mean junior-ish swing point because a senior swing point would really take you back into the November area out here. But that would really become my target area. It's around the 2170. It's 100 points to the downside. Let me tell you, people will be packing it in. They'll be. But really, the seasonality, if I were to, uh, in all honesty out here, here's one thing that we know about seasonal type patterns. You might be tuning in and say, what, what the heck are you talking about? Seasonal patterns out here. Look, many of you have seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. In Florida, we have a season, too. It's called summer basically year-round summer, right? Because, I mean, it was only in the 80s um, yesterday, mid-80s, I should say, out there. And, you know, come join us. But if we take a look at the seasonality cycles out here, the market basically forms a top sometime around January 6th. You look for patterns to complete in that general vicinity, okay? You don't necessarily, sometimes it's to the day. When it's to the day, I just always say, really, um, because Really, it, it does happen oftentimes out there. Uh, and the market moves lower into the end of January. As you know, we have shared with our children, put that retirement money 
in the market at the end of January, period, don't look at a bottom, just simply do it. Just make it a Nike move out there. And maybe it's going to be February 14th, 15th. I don't care because the markets are going to be higher in May, 80% of the time out there. So the problem with seasonality is that we really don't know the depth of the pullback. Last year, this year, I should say 2016, it was a mighty fine pullback. You know, sometimes it's tepid, sometimes it's a major, but you look for those bottoms to form right around the end of January, and that's really what we should be doing uh, this year, folks, as well. Has it begun? Let me tell you, the chinks are out there. The ice has been cracking, and uh, and so I still believe it is a seasonality cycle in 2016, right? That's the year we're in. That has been the strongest pattern, bar none. Forget about, forget about it. Forget about the uh, election cycles and all that stuff. The one pattern that has been true to its word has been the annual cycle pattern. It's strong. And uh, it's still in play. Singing in the key of G, the NQ, another indice to give us a short-term, short-term topping signal. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Dow's up 27. S&P is up uh, 6. So a couple of requests that have come in. Let's take a look at those. One was to uh, look at the Dow Jones Industrial specifically. And if we take a look at the uh, top that it has formed out here, really several different uh, topping patterns. If we take a look back here uh, on November 2nd, as it was making its most recent bottom, you'll see that blue number 13th, a TD, Tom DeMarc sequential count out here. Uh, as soon as price got above, uh, traded above that oscillator on change line that was back on November 8th. That was it. Sayonara, adios, hasta la vista, baby. Headed higher, headed to the North Pole to begin the Santa Claus rally. So that piece of it is done and over with. So all those folks that believe that the Santa Claus rally begins on December 24th, I've got news for you. You missed out on when the rally really begins, which is really around October out there. But that's okay. Think as you wish out here. Now, you had that nice little bottoming signal, and we know that inside the Dow we had that same type of topping signal down around or up around December the uh, 14th out here. And uh, we did get a close below Stevie's oscillator on change line right out here on December 23rd. So there's our, in my opinion, the confirming signal. There are other ways to do this, but... In an environment where the price oscillator, difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 to 39 in this case here, this, the uh, faster is still moving at a uh, at a uh, face faster uh, pace, a faster pace than that uh, short, uh, that longer term moving average. When the price oscillator is still rising, it's bullish. It's just simply, it's simply bullish out there. Uh, it was something Tom DeMarc didn't take into account when he wrote his book out there because he probably doesn't use it. He maybe even still to this day does he. But you and I. We've added that to our arsenal, and we, in fact, use it. Now, in addition to that topping signal, we had price moving higher, doing with less relative energy. We know that the Dow forms tops when that occurs. When what happens? Exactly. When the cavalry arrives out here. And in this case, the cavalry did arrive also on December 23rd when price gapped to the downside, oftentimes referred to as a falling window. That is a bearish reversal signal out here. So signal number two, and then you get to wave number seven, singing the key of G at the same time. Now, do these patterns have to work? Absolutely, positively, no. But you've got this, you've got the NQ, we could go through a long list. I'm not going to bore you with that long list out here. And there are signals. We're in this very uh, slow, quiet, uh, low volume cycle time period out here. So I'm not going to get too weirded out, although I'm fairly weird, as you already know. But I'm not going to get too weirded out, even if some of these patterns begin to fail a little bit. I'll be watching to see if really price can overtake that oscillator and change. So right now inside the Dow, the number is 20,032.64. So that means if you see a Dow 20,000, Stevie is not saying, okay, these topping patterns are over. Am I? Because the oscillator on change line, the mathematics behind that, and I'm no rocket scientist, as you clearly know, but it is rocket science that is involved with the formation of this number, 20,032. So hitting the 20,000 mark isn't going to blow my skirt up. And I don't even wear a skirt. Uh, 20,033, that could be a different story out here. So yeah, today is a rising window, a gap to the upside out there. But again, uh, topping signals. Now, the question as far as hey, where is price going to pull back to? We looked at the ES Mini earlier. Now, today we're looking at, or right now we're looking at the Dow. And I still go back to the last TD, Tom DeMarc, setup count, that little nine count. That ought to be support. That's a little red dash line across my screen. So that's really the uh, bottom, the low of December 6 out there in the 19,160 area. So that becomes 19,160 is the number I said. Now, at 19,160, I don't even know if there's any friends out there um, there's not because at 19,539, that could be a level of support. This is the weekly chart for the Dow. The green horizontal lines happen to be horizontal trading range boundary levels. So the first area that you want to take a look at on any pullback is going to be 19,539. And if that fails, then the uh, 19,000, what did I give you? 19,160 area would be the next place that you would be looking for out here. So that takes care of uh, the indices and, in general, the way that Stevie's uh, seeing the markets out here. But, 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 folks, well, don't, don't, please, don't buy into it. That there, there's folks. I hear these folks, and they're out there, and they're trying to call these like 
all-time high tops, and we're in bear markets. And where are those bear markets? We're at all-time highs. Now, it's nice to be able to call that all-time top out there, but I don't see it. I don't expect it. I don't anticipate it out there. If it changes, you know I will change in a heartbeat. Now, let's go take a look at some other requests out here. Tom is asking to take a look at the uh, uh, the Junior Nugget, the Nugget, uh, which he has long positions in. Uh, let's see what your thoughts are on gold and silver, especially the Junior Nugget, the J-Nug. So let's go take a look at the uh, J-Nug for Tom. J-N-U-G, obviously, is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So let's just start with that and provide Tom with some uh, feedback and some uh, some levels to be paying attention to. Now, you'll see this really inside the actual nugget, the N-U-G-T as well. If we take a look at the uh, J-Nugget, what you'd really like to see, Tom, is a close about 475. It doesn't have to be today. You'd like it to be today, but it might not be today as the high so far is 463. Why 475? Happens to be your Taz Daily profile high out there now volume today 17 million shares the upside going against 60 million shares the downside you don't have the volume to uh, you know but really we're kind of in volume schmolium uh territory with regard to where the markets are at at this stage during a holiday two-week period out here so i don't know if you want to put all your weight in the volume but certainly this is a resistance level that it needs to get above. So, Tom, I know that you are a uh, day-ish type trader out here. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking your money and run or putting it in a tight stop or, you know, anything along those lines. But, of course, you'd want to take a look at, hey, what's going on inside of gold itself out here. So let's go switch over and just take a look at Goldilocks and the, the numbers that you need to take a look. And it's up $4.80, 1138 No big deal out here. But there is a big deal. And the big deal, oh, did that disappear? Did it disappear? Son of a gun. There was a brand new weekly profile that was out there earlier this morning. It is since vanquished. It is gone. But, Tom, here's what you know about Goldilocks. Ran right smack dab into resistance here late last night, early this morning, when it got up to a high of 1151.70. And at 1152.50, that has to be the bottom of the daily box out there. And so it just got smacked down unfortunately. So not really a good sign out here. You'd love to see this get above the 1152 mark. Then you'd hit the head to the 1169. It didn't do that, unfortunately. If I take a look at the uh, March uh, contract out here, you know, and look at gold, there's not anything here that I see that's uh, wonderful. Um, you know, so I, I think uh, if you're in the money on these, uh, it uh, it might not be a bad idea to just go ahead and in and, and take it. Um, you know, if I look at the yen futures, let's go take a look at uh, what the yen. We'll just look at the at the continuous contract out here. You know, if we saw this thing taken off to the upside, Stevie would have a whole different perspective on it. I don't. In the end futures, that's maybe where I was looking at that has the uh, new weekly profile. And it needs to get above 0.8574. It hasn't done that. So, um, and hey, the GDX, the GDX itself had a nice island top. It still does. It's, well, when we come back, let's take a look at it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
FNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, you know, we were taking a look at, for uh, one of our listeners, uh, viewers, Tom was uh, taking a look at the uh, mining equities. Let me give you the bullish case out here, if I can, in the mining sector itself, Tom, and that would be this. Uh, so here, uh, just as inside your uh, junior nugget, Price should run right into resistance. It's Taz Daily Profile. So, too, has the uh, GDX. 1974 is the number. You've been up to uh, 1978. You're trading right now 1971. Volume, 17 million shares. In essence, going against 100, 175 million shares. So, you can see, we can't be – volume, there's not a chance. There's not there's, – there's, it's just not there. So, you it, it, you know, not to be stuttering Steve or anything, but at this stage here, um, it's just not there. Now, the high, as long as price doesn't trade down to 1948, and it hasn't, it's been down to 1952, there is a small little gap. And that creates nice little island bottom pattern out here. Now, you know, we do pay attention to those. They are more important inside individual stocks than they are inside the ETFs because of underlying instruments out there. And the uh, one of the heavy, but, but still we pay attention to them. You know, I don't want to say we're not going to ignore them. Uh, the last time that there was a potential island top or island bottom, I should say, in this case here inside the G. Oh, I wasn't there. I was looking at something else. My apology. Let me just uh, see if on this other chart I can identify anything out here that might have been island bottom inside of the uh, GDX. Just going back and look at it from 10 years time period. Just a real quick scan. And, and if nothing pops out, nothing pops out. Um, Right now, nothing is popping out. Sorry about that. Uh, so I don't really have that there. But one of the components inside of the uh, GDX, and this is why I say I don't know if that island bottom is really going to hold out here. But it'd be Barrick Gold. ABX is a ticker symbol. It's the only, uh, there's two individual stocks that had island tops at the open, or island bottoms at the open. And Barrick Gold happened to be one of them. That, that since has failed as uh, price got uh, it well let's just make sure here uh the high it did the high of friday was uh, 1460 the low so far today has been for oh, 1461 i take that back there's a one penny gap inside of uh, barrick gold so now as an individual stock goes barrick gold and it's, i think barrick is the number one waiting inside of the GDX. And as long as price doesn't trade back there, Tomas, 
Um, you know, you've got a what the heck is that? Uh, you've got a uh, I've never seen that uh, never seen that message come up. Whatever I did there, uh, you actually have so fourteen sixty is the high from Friday, and the low fourteen sixty one. By gosh, you actually have a island uh, bottom inside of Barrett Gold. You don't have it in you know some of the other top holdings. There, take a look at uh, Gold Corp as an example. You know it's not out there. Um, most of them don't have it. But uh, so pay attention to uh, Barrett Gold ABX. There was one other individual mining stock that had a island bottom mon that was the asa gold asa gold and i think that that is still in play out here let me see asa gold the high from december 15 1034 the high from friday 1034 and the low today 1035 yeah so there's two and i count them on my hand Two individual stocks that actually have uh, island bottom patterns, ASA, which is a ticker symbol for ASA gold out there. All right, so that's the uh, that's so that's the bullish case with regard to the uh, mining sector. You're not going to be able to make your case based on volume today. Just ain't there. Don't expect that it'll be there. Uh, Steve, uh, have you commented on the 10-year notes and the 30-year bonds? Um, I have not. So let's go comment on those. And if we take a look at the um, at the 30-year, uh, let me go over to this chart. Let's see if we can post the uh, current 30-year bond up here. It's going to take me just a moment uh, to do that. But what I will tell you, what the chart here is going to show us is that the uh, signals are that the 30-year uh, Treasury has formed a bottom. And you might say, well, how is it that you're making that determination? And we're making that determination as follows. So that I can put it up here on, on the screen. Come on, work with us. Um, even though it's pulling back today, that's okay. Uh, and we take a look at the 30-year. Oh, that's, that's nice. If you grab the right chart, that will help. That was the GDX. That's not the chart I wanted to grab. This was the chart. Here's what we know about the 30-year. Uh, when it was moving lower to the less relative energy around December 13th is when it formed a nice little hammer candle out there. That was a bullish reversal signal. Uh, the very next day, price got above that oscillator and change line. It has remained above that level. 146.97 is the number to be paying attention to out there. And as long as price stays above that, it communicates to you and I that the price oscillator has turned up. Either counter trend rally, and you might say, well, where would that rally take us to out here? 152.65 is the first level, and uh, really all the way to the 163 area would be another spot that, to be looking if, in fact, this has bottomed. But it's given us all the bottoming signals out here with regard to the bullish reversal signal at the end of a uh, pattern and uh, in price trading above that oscillator on change line out here. Now, the problem here in the 30-year Treasury is each bounce, small bounce, has been met with some selling pressure. And that says that uh, what you and I have, what, what could be occurring here is even though this should be forming a bottom, there are ETFs just trying to figure out how to kind of, not kind of, but actually liquidate their position some way because they know that they are they are in for a uh, that the that the that the trading that the trading scenario of the last 30 years is not going to be the trading scenario of the next 30 years. And they're only interested in really the next couple of years out here. So um, this one is a bit uh, tricky out here. That's the 30 year treasury. If we look at the 10 year out here let's see what we can do here what do we have let's go take a peek oh, let's grab the wrong thing sorry about that let's see if we can uh, take a look at it see what it is communicating to you and i we don't really have that bullish reversal signal out here cause that didn't occur right quite frankly until friday when you had a nice little small little bullish engulfing candle form out here so that was really the first signal you're not getting any follow through today but the price oscillator here has also turned up so it's um it's got potential, but that's all that it has out there. So I hope that that assists you. It's all going to be about, you know, one thing and one thing only, uh, or it appears to be one thing and one thing only, and that's going to be the uh, yen futures, you know, or the yen U.S. dollar, however it is that you want to go ahead and take a look at it. And that is uh, pulling back a bit. I'm going to look, uh, put up the continuous contract right now. And, uh, you know, that's given us a nice uh, bottoming signal. 
So you get a nice little TD sequential count back on December 19th. You get a bullish reversal signal the next day taking you above the oscillator and change line. So the yen futures suggest that the yen wants to strengthen. And if that happens, gold should move higher the 30-year Treasury, the 10-year should move higher as well. So all the signals are out there. They're very subtle. We just have to see how this plays out. And uh, you are welcome. Now, I don't see any other requests out there. Of course, you can send me an email, steve at tfn.com. You still have, you know, a few minutes to do that, and I'll be happy to go ahead and take a look at your stocks or answer whatever questions I can just to put an extra set of eyes to navigate through these what we'll call very quiet markets out here. Let's not forget, the NQ is strong, but it's singing in the key of G. Steve Rhodes with Tia Finette. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Warren in Denver is uh, would like us to take a look at ticker symbol MPLX, and the company name is MPLX LP out here. So it's in the uh, it's in the business of moving liquid propane. 
Uh, give me a second here while I type something uh, in. And uh, the question is, is this a top? Because Warren is trying to buy this on a uh, pullback. So let's uh, take a look at a couple things with regard to this uh, equity. This is an interesting stock chart here. I had time just during the break just to throw up some different time frames out here. Uh, this has only been trading for a few years. Uh, began back in 2012, at least the data that I have. Interestingly enough, this year on a yearly chart, yeah, we don't look at annual charts too often out here. But nonetheless, uh, this is going to form a hammer candle. You know, so that's uh, saying, you know, this thing may have found a nice bottom. So that would be a reason why uh, Warren is looking to uh, buy this on a uh, pullback. If I put a monthly chart out here, you're going to see two different hammer candles. One right here in December 2015 and then one here back in February 2016. Another bullish reversal signal from a monthly basis in March. So it's suggesting that this bottom out here is a, a pretty decent bottom. Uh, down at the 1634 level. Now we're at 33 bucks, so it's a 100% move, if you will, since that bottom had formed. And not a lot of movement uh, sideways out here, right? Ever it's just been small bodied monthly candles that we're talking about. So, with regard to has this formed a, a top? Probably not just yet. Here is the uh, daily chart. You might say, well, why would I say that? And Warren, the reason I would say that is right now today, uh, if this were to close where it's going to close at, it's right above the weekly profile. Of course, this is a day. But if this closes the week above 3380, this suggests that price would go top at about 3486. Um, and then it would uh, potentially go ahead and pull back. Your ultimate buy on this equity would be a pullback to 3101 out here. I know you're mentioning 33 bucks, and um, you're at 33.94. Um, you know, volume. The last time that price was up here, you had volume of 1.6 million shares. Today, you're up with 314,000 shares. At the highs in the swing in November, you had 2.7 million shares. So it doesn't look like it's going to bust it out to the upside. But um, I'll give you targeted buy areas to watch and observe would be 3253, 3268, and the ultimate would be right around the 3101 level out there. So that is ticker symbol MPLX. Now, don't get too too uh, too hyper about this stock because, as I say, it's just moving sideways out here. And get rid of those profiles. So this is you're looking at this for some reason uh, as a long term holding because to anticipate you're going to get much in the way of any anything out of here short term. We haven't seen it for the um, you know since april of uh, this year out here maybe even back a little bit further so uh, uh steve the swiss uh, corona uh correlates with what commodity swiss franc um swiss cheese i don't know is that a uh, you know i haven't uh, that's a great question out here um i don't uh, know what the swedish corona or the swiss franc uh, correlates with do, do you uh, give me a clue maybe uh, maybe you know I, I so I don't know the answer to that uh, question out here I haven't looked at that uh, correlation so uh, sorry that I don't have any additional information but if you give me something we can go put both those charts up on our screen and we can take a look at it and see if the correlation is there for us to really pay attention to so uh, we won't be able to do that today but you know if you post that in there we'll be happy to look at it so folks uh, as far as what to expect for the rest of the year meaning the next few trading sessions probably not much out there not much to the upside, not much to the downside, but the markets are giving us nice short-term topping signals as we move into the, we'll call it, slightly unfavorable seasonal cycle. So, uh, folks, have a, a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.